Hello, this is Andrea with ADS and just wanted to share with you about my evening today because it was so insightful and so thought-provoking. I uh, went to an event with Atlanta AIMA, as I call it, A-I-M-A. -A. It's their internet in their interactive marketing association. And so I uh, went to that for the first time in a long time. I, when I first moved here two years ago, uh, I went to one of, you know, actually a couple of their events and then I kind of fell off of that. And so I go to lots of networking events all the time. And I just kind of said to myself, you know, you really should go to um, some marketing, uh, branding, advertising types of community events sometimes just to be in the mix of people who do what you do more um, as opposed to, you know, all the other industries you network in, uh, which so, and it proved to be uh, a good investment today. I really enjoyed the chat with Atlanta Ama's group. Um, they were chatting all about pivoting in your career, pivoting in your life, when life circumstances happen to you, whether it be a sickness, an illness, a spouse passes, a loved one has issues, you're a caretaker all of a sudden, or on the job, which is very common, um, right sizing, downsizing, budget cuts, uh, reorganization, restructuring. Uh, there's a million trillion names for it, right? So um, I'm, many of us have been there. I am no stranger to it, have seen it more times than I care to count. It reminds me so much of my uh, Power of the Closed Door blog post all about how closed doors can really be open doors for you. Um, and in my case, it really has been. It really has been open doors more so than closed. However, this idea of pivoting and major changes happening in your career, in your life, was so good and it was so huge and big and I enjoyed the conversation so much. I just wanted to share some of those nice points with you that we got today. Um, one girl I really, truly related with, her name's Casey Blackwood. Casey Blackwood, she's with Digitas. And she says she's never done the same thing twice, which I can so relate to because I've been in so many different industries doing marketing and branding. I've been in um, nonprofit, in the nonprofit space, in home building, just like she had right before the bubble burst. Um, you know, and so I call it the housing bubble burst, the depression. Um, it kind of hit everyone back in the 08, 09 range. And, you know, whether you liked it or not, it kind of affected everyone and is still affecting some people even today. And so, um, you know, we both had that home building experience with a home builder. She was doing marketing with them. So did I. Um, so I can relate to that. And actually, she was an English teacher before. Well, she wanted to be a teacher. She was an English major, wanted to be a teacher, ended up being a waitress. You know, so talk about pivoting right in the beginning. Totally can understand that. Um, and I just love the spirit of the people tonight because they were just saying, you know, you just don't know how many careers you might be in. Um, it reminded me so much of Maya Angelou, who was such, so gifted at so many things. You know, she could speak so many different languages. She wasn't just a poet. She was also a dancer. She was also a teacher. She was also a professor and um, you know, she's just did so, such a vast variety of things in her life, you know, so that, yes, we know her largely for her poetry, but she was just so able to move and pivot and shake and do things different, you know, as it called for. It's just because she loved it. And I love that so much. So there's so much a positive side to all of this idea of pivoting and moving and being different and um, being able to be agile. So I appreciated that perspective a lot. Um, Casey also mentioned to just keep showing up, which was also a good point towards the idea of persistence, um, you know, which we all need. And another point she had that I liked was love the people you work with, which is true. You know, whether you're on your own business or you're on a job somewhere, um, she think, I think she said her dad told her that 
Uh, you will never like what you're doing, even if you're so passionate about the job itself, whatever task you're doing, whatever project you're on, if you're so passionate about it. If you don't like the people you work with, it's kind of pointless, you know? So I totally get that. Um, I think that's a great reason to always try to establish a great rapport with people, you know? Try to establish a great rapport with people wherever you can. Uh, you know, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. I believe it or not been there where personalities just don't work out as much as, as much as you may think you're a people person and as much as you may think everybody likes you, sometimes it just doesn't work like that. And so, you know, sometimes you gotta be flexible. So I appreciated her points. Um, there was a lady named Sally Mundell with an interesting group I have to look up called The Packaged Good. You can find her on Twitter at The Packaged Good, uh, Sally Mundell. And she also has been through a lot of changes. And some of the things I loved about what she said was, we don't have all the answers, especially as entrepreneurs. You just don't have all the answers. And if you wait around, until you do, you'll never accomplish what you set out to accomplish. Um, you'll never experience the beauty and the blessings and the power and the wonderful people that you'll be exposed to in your life if you just take those chances and just dive in, you know, dive in and go for it. Um, even when you don't have all the answers, it's okay not to have all the answers. She said, the best leaders don't know everything, they just ask all the right questions, which is true. So don't be afraid to ask. It's okay. Questions are a friend. Even when you feel they're stupid, even when you think someone's going to think ill of you for the question that you asked, it doesn't matter. It's your education. This is your education right now. So whether you're on a job or you're on in entrepreneur mode, you're always um, captain of your own soul. So I love that so much. The best leaders don't know everything. They just ask all the right questions. That was great, Sally. Um, side note, at this event, and you'll see this if you follow my um, Twitter or Instagram accounts at Miss ADS08 or the ADS Agency, um, I love that they had these live Twitter feeds, you know, so it's been a while since I've been to an event where they actually deployed that. I'm sure they do that at conferences all the time and that kind of thing, uh, but they had uh, I wanted to plug this for you. So you, for those of you who throw on events all the time, you might want to check this out. It's called twitterfall.com. And so it gives a semi live feed of the tweets that are happening at the time. So if you give everyone your Twitter account, um, your hashtag that you're using, you know, you can show a feed at that time. Um, the downside is it only does a little bit. So you know how Twitter has increased their their um, character allowance? So it used to be 140 characters and now you can write like a mini paragraph almost. So it'll only show like two little lines. And if you post an image, if you tweet out an image, it doesn't show up either. It's like a hyperlink, but it gets the gist of it, you know, so it shows activity, it shows engagement, you can see it live time, you know, real time happening in the room. So you can encourage your guests to tweet to you. And uh, that's kind of fun and interactive, right? So uh, twitterfall.com, that's something cool to check out. Side note, uh, another lady who was there, Stacy Sutton, she's a serial entrepreneur. I appreciate that so much. Just listening to her story of how she um, bought, sold, built businesses. And now, you know, she's really in that space where she's on her purpose mode, which I love that. As you know, that's my word for the year, purposeful. And I love this so much because she was talking about how she was just getting so tired in some of her roles in her career. Um, she's been in agency world, you know, for several years. I think she said 29, which I can't believe it. She doesn't look like she could be old enough to be 29 years anywhere. Uh, so shout out to you, Stacy, for looking great. But, um, you know, she mentioned how, how, um, you know, how she was in those roles and just not happy, um, just tired of it. And she just really wanted to do something that she was excited about, um, you know, could be passionate about. She now is the marketing director, I believe it is, or she handles the marketing for 
Clean Hands, Safe Hands, um, which is an organization that really pushes physicians, those in the medical career fields, to wash their hands before dealing with patients, going into surgery, small procedures, that kind of thing, literally saving lives, right? So she said she's found some purpose there, uh, which is really cool. So I totally agree with that. You've got to be in a place where you love what you do, you know, because life is too short. Why? I know we all have to pay bills and I know we all have to make things work out here, but at the same time, it's so short and we have the power to be our unique selves and there's just far too many ways now there's far too many ways to figure out how to make money at something you love doing and i've heard all the commentary that some people really feel um you know make money period you know it's all about money and i get that and i get how they feel that you know passions aside a lot of people don't make money off of their passions but seriously life is too short for that why can't you figure that out how to do what you love and make money doing it and make a living out of it you know you don't have to be super rich to have a wealthy life right uh, so I love that school of thought that you can really be rich uh, with friends with family with experiences with memories um, and those are the things that we love and cherish at the end of the day um, if you ask anyone on their deathbed, what are they thinking about? It's not how much money they made. It's the real things that matter out of their life. So in any case, I, I, that just resonated with me so much when Stacy mentioned that, um, she hit a, a, a moment in her life where she was not living up to her full potential. She just said to herself, you're not living up to your full potential right now. She said that to herself and realized that to herself. And I think that's when she made that change and said, hey, you know, um, I got to make a change here. I got to do something different because she felt like she had so much more to do and so much more to give in this life. And so that resonates with me all day, all day. And I'm sure it resonates with you, too. Um, you know, being in that space where you're just like, there has to be more than this, right? So, um, you know, it's just, it speaks to that whole life is vaporous feeling, because uh, it is, you know, it's too short not to find what it is. It is your gift in this world and do it, right? I believe that a lot. And I appreciate Stacy for bringing that up tonight. Um, Gumbo Show Joe of Agency Sparks. Uh, so you can find him on Twitter, Gumbo Show Joe. I just like super love that ha that handle, Gumbo Show Joe, is really cool. Um, he says, Agency Sparks is like a matchmaker for brands and agencies. I love that. You know, I often like to play matchmaker myself. So, <laughs> and some of my girlfriends are like subject to right now. So, uh, and guy friends, you know. Uh, so I love that idea that he's paired that, his personal ability to match make people along with uh, his personal ability and professional ability to match make apparently brands and agencies. I like that a lot. Um, so he says a lot tonight. That was so cool. Um, I love this one that's connect the dots, not collect them. Connect the dots, not collect them. He was big on relationships and people. Again, you know, so his his mantra with Agency Sparks apparently is being a matchmaker for brands and agencies. So he's big on relationships, which I am too. Um, they rule the world. They run everything. So I thought that was so great about building and collecting relationships. And he made a point tonight, which I thought was so good and so relevant, that you never know what that relationship you've built, that person, you, that coworker you used to work with, um, that person at that nonprofit you used to volunteer with a long time ago, that person at your church that you thought, ah, oh, we could never be friends, but you're still nice to them anyway. You know, you just never know when that can turn around and become something um, 
that actually benefits you later on. You know, it's just planting seeds and reaping those as we go. As Dennis Ross said in our last, um, our last ADS chat 007, and he was talking about how we are farmers, writers are farmers, and we're planting seeds along the way, right? So that our reader is experiencing this harvest and we're planting seeds and we're watering them. And all of a sudden, before they know it on page 20, a bush is growing, a tree is growing. You know, I love that analogy and it, and it reminds me so much of what uh, Joe said tonight with regards to building and collecting relationships. So that's it. I don't want to waste all your time tonight. I just wanted to quickly share that because it was such a good event. I appreciate it being there. Um, you know, I hated to have to leave too soon, but it was, you know, getting kind of latish and, and I'm starving and can't be starving. I am a hangry person. So, <laughs> you know, I can't live off a of little meatballs and stuff. I have to have like a real sustenance. So <laughs> it was cool though. I enjoyed the event. Um, you know, two free drink tickets. That was nice. Good job, Atlanta Ama. Uh, our next event is going to be February 13th. I know that's right before Valentine's Day, but you're not doing anything on the 13th. I bet you're not. So February 13th at 8 p.m. Having an awesome chat with a friend I just love. I love her so much. Her name's Jan Hill. She's a wedding and events planner of La Fette Wedding and Events. Wedding and Events. Jan Hill of La Fette Wedding and Events. And we are talking about how to elevate your launch parties. So don't miss that. That's going to be February 13th, 8 p.m. on the ADS Agency Facebook page. Don't miss that. How to elevate your launch party. So if you ever thought about how to throw a launch party for a business, you got a ribbon cutting, you got an app you want to launch, a new website, be it as it may, whatever it is. At some point, you're going to have to launch something. And so it would behoove you to have some great tips, right, on how to do that properly. So Jan Hill, she is the best. I enjoyed chatting with her. You're going to love this. So hope you don't miss it. January, February 13th, that's a Tuesday at 8 p.m. ADS chat. That's on the ADS Agency Facebook page. All right, guys. Sorry, this isn't like super high tech today. I just kind of threw this up because I really wanted to chat with you about this real fast. Only for YouTube this time, okay? All right, thank you. Have a good night and be blessed out there. Do something that matters. Mwah.